has to certify that a patient has a qualifying diagnosis. So you'll see in the bill there's seven, eight, seven different diagnoses, everything from HIV AIDS to cancer. And, um, and so the doctor would confirm that the patient has the diagnosis, and then that would be sent to the health department, and the health department would then process the paperwork, issue an ID card, and then the patient could go to a dispensary and pick up for the first time lab tested marijuana, marijuana that has been confirmed for purity, for dosing, all these things that we, you know, that they, these folks don't currently have access to. I mean, did your study review? Oh, I'm sorry. The study showed that basically what happened. This study has been sitting in the pipeline, languishing all these years because the federal government, what, what happens with these, any studies that have been approved by the FDA, have to go through the DEA to purchase study drug. It's a really interesting situation. Marijuana is the only Schedule One drug that has this, this requirement that it has to be, we call it the NIDA monopoly. NIDA, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, has the sole authority to sell marijuana study drug for any FDA-approved studies. So if NIDA does not approve of your study, your study will never be conducted. But we have to go, we can't just go to a dispensary in, our, in Arizona and buy medical marijuana. You can't do that. If it's an FDA-approved study, it has to be bought through NIDA, through the University of Mississippi, which is the only cultivation center in the country. So the problem is, what, what we've seen, the trend is for 40 years, the federal government has essentially been blocking specific marijuana research. So they do let through certain studies. So if you go on clinicaltrials.gov or do your Google search, you will find thousands of trials on marijuana. But if you look at those trials closely, you'll see that most of the studies that have been green-lighted by NIDA are studies looking at the harmful side effects of marijuana or the abuse potential of marijuana. But if you dare say that you want to look at the efficacy of marijuana, how effective is marijuana in treating our combat vets that have PTSD, those studies seem to get put into a permanent review process where they never emerge. So that's why we have studies. We have a study from 10 years ago that was approved by the FDA, approved by an IRB, an institutional review board, and is sitting in the pipeline just waiting for NIDA to sell us that study drug, 10 <coughs> grams of marijuana. Doctor, we have a couple more questions. Oh, sure. Representative Benvenuti. Uh, doctor, I thank you for your testimony. Uh, Representative uh, Marzian said, uh, marijuana could possibly help some people, could possibly, uh, and does not hurt anybody. Um, what FDA-approved research has been done to show that it can help people? Because we don't approve drugs in this country based on could possibly. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, that's a, let me just say. I, I'm asking I, you a medical question. I agree with you. As a physician, and, and our physician community in Arizona, for instance, we've been begging for this research to move forward. We've been saying that we don't want to prescribe a drug that hasn't been allowed to go through the proper drug development process. That we but Dr. Have. With all due respect, that's what you're asking us to do. What, but what's happened is the physician community has realized that none of this research is allowed to be conducted. So what's happening is these patients are suffering needlessly when there is a drug out there that is available to alleviate their suffering the research cannot be done i'll give you I'll doctor give you. we don't know that what we know is could possibly right and what you're asking us to do as a legislature is to approve drugs to circumvent the fda process and to approve a drug on could possibly and we know for example in a study that came out of colorado that Traffic fatalities under Colorado's medical marijuana law increased 114 percent. So we know there's we know there's harmful side effects, and yet you want us to approve something on the could possibly. And as a scientist, as, an, as a physician, do no harm is the first rule, correct? So why why are we having this hearing and taking this testimony? This is an argument to be put, and I think a valid argument, to be put forth to the FDA. I don't think this legislature, or any legislature in the United States, has the ability to circumvent the federal process for bringing a drug to market. And if you're going to call this a drug, then we ought to study it and bring it to market once proven, like we do every other drug in this country. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'm not a physician, but in my work with the VA, 
we wouldn't have, I can say with authority, we wouldn't have passed the VA policy had there, had there not been sufficient research to support the notion that cannabis is actually providing a benefit. Now you say, how does that exist in the same universe as what my colleague just said? But it can and it does, I'll tell you why. There has been some double-blind, placebo-based research when a state like the state of California asked to do this research, it was allowed. So we do have some double-blind that, that was what we submitted to the VA was a handful of neuropathic pain studies at VA hospitals that showed through double-blind, placebo-based precision that it was actually providing a benefit. But even more than that, we, we're in two camps here. Uh, Dr. Sisley is working in the United States for the FDA process. I don't have that constraint. I'm looking at the FDA process of Great Britain, the FDA process of Canada, the FDA process of Australia and, and, and Germany. I'm going right now in just a couple weeks to Austria where we've had a product on the shelf, a cannabis product supported by a massive amount of double-blind placebo-based research that's actually in the pharmacy right now and they're trying to expand that throughout Europe and that's what I'm going to testify on. So while there's a dearth of research, there's also a massive amount of research. While there's a lack of evidence, there's also a massive amount of evidence. We don't know what strains work best for this or that. We don't know what products that haven't been even presented to the market yet are going to work best for this or that. We, we really, as patients, want this data. We want this research. But don't mistake that for not having adequate research to say it works well as a medicine right now and that doctors will support it. You know, we, we had to bring a doctor from Arizona. But I can tell you, in Oregon, we have thousands of doctors thousands that have written recommendations. Not a couple that are out there, you know, we have a thousand doctors that are recognizing the, the, the massive amount of, of research that is available. And, the mass and also, you know, I, I represent veterans. We're kind of strong with our opinion. I, I represent a veteran in Perry Park, North Carolina. And he went up to the drug czar and he said, okay, you told me to come back with the research. I came back with the research, but you know what? You were rude to me. When I came to you and I told you that it's helping me, you should listen. So this is anecdotal studies. It's not double-blind placebo-based research. I said we have the double-blind placebo-based research, but listen to me. I'm a veteran. I'm telling you it helps me. And it helps me alleviate suffering. It helps me have time and be able to spend time, quality, quality time with my daughter. My daughter's 19 years old. I miss so much time of her life. It was lost because I was suffering in Virginia without legal access. I go to Austria, and my needs are met. I'm a disabled United States Air Force veteran. Why do I have to leave this country to have my medical needs met? I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman. And just to Representative Westrom. Representative Westrom. Chairman. Well, this is an important issue. And, and I have appreciated their feedback, but I've only asked one question. I have some more questions, and I, would, I have at least two more questions. This is an important issue.